Okay, um, here we've got a how question, question 10 from the waste um, specimen example. And uh, we've looked at a lot of how questions, but there's no harm in looking at one more because they're such a crucial type of question, definitely going to come up. And um, this one is actually very easy to recognise. It's a very sort of typical, how does the writer try to persuade um, question. So how does the writer try to persuade British people to ask for a doggy bag? Um, now, any time we've got a how question, we are going to need to look at um, persuasive devices, things like questions, things like statistics, things like um, shock tactics, things like um, talking to the reader directly. And if we've got a few of those um, techniques ready, we know what know a few things that we're going to look for. Now it is important we're not just going through technique spotting, saying the writer uses a question here um, and just leaving it at that. But if we do have an idea in mind of the sorts of things that we might be looking to find, then it, it should be quite helpful. Right, let's have a look. How does the writer try to persuade British people to ask for a doggy bag? As we can see, it's quite a long text. Um, and the title is quite long, so with a long title, um, I think there's a good chance that there's something to say about that. So does this try and persuade British people to use doggy bags? Yeah, I think it does really. Um, you know, as we've said, questions are very often persuasive techniques. And I think this question, why are the British people too embarrassed to ask? The idea here is that it's, it's, it's there's a little bit of shame going on here, isn't there? Like, what, why don't we ask more often? The implication being that we should ask more often. So there's something there that we can talk about. Um, the first line, doggy bags are part and parcel of eating out in America. Well, um, what's happening there is the writer's making a, a comparison. So saying that actually... Americans are much better at it, much better at using doggy bags and asking for doggy bags than British people. So that's the that's the technique used there to convince us that we need to do it more. Many British diners struggle with the idea of asking to take their leftovers home. Something campaigners want to change. I think we could comment on that. Because um, what it's drawing our attention to is that there's a whole campaign to improve the number of people asking for doggy bags and not wasting their food. And it goes on to say, in the UK, it's a rarely heard request, asking for a doggy bag. If one does have the audacity to ask for a doggy bag, it will probably be uttered under one's breath or behind one's hand. Well, I think... There's an implication there that if you do ask for a doggy bag, you're actually being quite brave. Um, audacity means having the nerve, having the having the guts, really, to ask for a, for a doggy bag. So I think the implication there is that it's quite a brave thing to do. So therefore, something that you should do. Recent survey by the Sustainable Restaurant Association showed 25% of diners too embarrassed to ask for boxes, 24% wrongly believing they're against health and safety policies. Okay, so here we've got statistics, which was one thing we we thought we might might be relevant. Um, can we use them? 25% of diners too embarrassed to ask for boxes. Mm, I think this one is a bit easier to use. 24% wrongly assuming they're against, against health and safety policies actually what what this is clearly doing is showing us that doggy bags aren't against health and safety policies and 24% is quite a large number 
So I think there's something we could say there. The organisation is launching a new campaign, so we're back to this Sustainable Restaurant Association. It's launching a new campaign to embolden diners to ask for doggy bags to encourage restaurants to make patrons feel more comfortable about it. Right, so kind of what it's saying is that restaurants and customers should be working together. So we could say something there about encourage restaurants to make your patrons feel more comfortable. So that's a way of encouraging the reader, encouraging the reader to ask for a doggy bag because actually restaurants want you to as well. So that, that could be part of our answer. And then we've got this clear comment that like hoping it will help the re re reduce the amount of waste in the UK. So that's a persuasive feature, isn't it? Um, old habits die hard. This isn't the first time a campaign has tried to convert Britons to the doggy bag culture. So that's saying this isn't going to be easy. Dining out has become more and more common. And then we've got some statistics to back that up. In 1981, so, uh, well, a long time ago, even for, even for me, um, over 30 years ago, 957 million meals were served. Um, this year, it's 1,661 million, so... It's it's coming. It's close to doubling compared to over thirty years ago. So I think that statistic is making the point that there are a huge amount of eating out is is very very common, very popular. So if we don't use doggy bags, we're going to be creating a massive amount of waste, almost twice as much as in nineteen eighty one. Um, then we've got this bit at the end when people's actions change so do their attitudes and ultimately people will not only reduce waste and save money but feel good about their actions so that is showing clearly that is showing the benefits of asking for a doggy bag okay that looks like a good spread of um, details that we've picked out We've got some technical features that we can talk about, the statistics, um, the rhetorical question. So that's what we need to be hitting the um, top band of our answer. And it looks like we're ready to go. So let's uh, create a text box and start our answer. Right, I'm going to point the reader where to look. And the first place I want them to be looking is in the title. So, in, that's not very clear, is it? Get rid of that. In the title of the article, oops, a rhetorical question is used. I'm going to quote the rhetorical question. Why are the British too embarrassed to ask? Then after a quote, I'm going to explain the effect, which is a way of shaming the reader into questioning their own habits and asking themselves why they don't ask for a doggy bag more often. Okay, so in that single sentence I've got the quotation, I've got the detail that we want, I've used some uh, technical language to analyse the, the language used, 
and we've talked about the effect. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we picked out was that the comparison with America. So the writer makes a comparison with the US saying, and I'm going to drop in the quote, embed it, doggy bags are part and parcel of eating out in America. And I think the 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 effect is quite similar to to what we said before. Again, it's like questioning why should we be different. So, which again makes the reader question why okay um, then we had campaigners want to change didn't we so um, I'm just going to point the reader where to look at the end of the first paragraph The writer refers campaign for change. I can I'm just going to use put quotes around the word change, which implies that there are many people. Who see? Who see? Not using a doggy bag as a negative, or you see, not using a doggy bag in a negative light. That should work. Okay. Um, yeah. Then we we're talking about this implication that you're brave if you do. Uh, so the writer claims that those who do ask for doggy bags have audacity, which presents them in a, I mean audacity isn't necessarily positive but here I think which implies which implies that they are brave to do so I'm just going to leave it at that I'm not going to say anything about the terminology I'm not going to develop it anymore because audacity can be a, a negative thing if you say that was really audacious it can be cheeky. Um, if you think about football, you know, if somebody makes an audacious break or has an audacious attempt on goal, it's very brave. It's quite, um, you know, you're going against going against the flow. You're being an individual. So I think there's enough there that audacity, audacity can be a real positive. So, but I'm but I'm going to move on. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the statistics. So. Um, Statistics are mentioned saying that, and then I'm going to drop the statistic in 24% wrongly believed that doggy bags are against. Oops, the giants against health and safety policies. Um, so the what actually what what the article is doing there is actually kind of educating us. So here we are being educated to realise. 
that there are no laws or regulations against doggy bags, but that they are a positive thing. So it's the opposite. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, we were talking about this win-win situation. So restaurants and customers will benefit. So I'm just going to say that quite straightforward. Um, the campaign presents a win-win situation both for restaurants and customers by reducing waste whoops, and costs. Okay, um, now we might turn through these. Let's have a look back, see what else we talked about. Yeah, it talks about reducing the amount of waste and actually I've just said that, reducing waste and cost, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, right, we've got another statistic. So let's say that a second statistic is used and that's just showing how many um, how many people do eat out. So it is used showing how many British people now eat out. I'm going to drop the number in, 1661. And I'd better just check what that was, like 1661 million. This year, which shows how huge the scale of waste can be if doggy bags aren't used. Does that answer the question? Yep. Shows that the status quo, the situation at the moment is, is really worrying. Uh, if none of those 1661 million meals are, um, you know, are, are doggy bagged up, that's a huge amount of waste. So, so yes, the, the statistic persuades us to ask for a doggy bag. All right, um, and then we've got our last point. Um, so I'm going to say the article finishes by showing all the positives. Um, Reducing waste and saving money, but also feeling good. So the article finishes by listing some positives of doggy bags, not just the not just the way they save money and reduce waste, but also make the users feel good. Okay, now that to me seems a pretty good, pretty um, pretty wide-ranging answer that does include some um, some analytical language, so we, we've got rhetorical question, we've got use of comparison, We've got statistics mentioned. Okay, and I know that those are going to crop up in the mark scheme. All right, but let's have a look. Let's see what the mark scheme does say. The first part of the mark scheme gives you guidance on um, what sort of quality, what sort of detail of answer to look for. So for the C grade, we're looking for five to six marks out of ten. If you explain how a number of different examples from the text persuade, begin to analyse how language and techniques are used, um, then you're at the C grade. Carefully selected examples. So yes, you're choosing your quotes well and you are explaining 
those quotes in a reasonable level of detail, beginning to analyse language and techniques. If we're looking for the A star, the 9, of ten, nine or 10 out of 10, it's going to be all of these things, um, plus subtleties of the writer's technique are explored in relation to how the reader is influenced. Well considered, accurate use of linguistic terminology supports comments effectively. Well, I think we've got some of that. Subtleties of the writer's technique. Mm, okay, well let's have a look at the second part of the mark scheme. Let's have a look at what they say we should have picked up on. Title, rhetorical question. Yes, we've got that. Comparison. Yes, we got that. Tells us there's something campaigners want to change. Yes, and I think we did comment on that in quite a lot of detail. Um, we talked about the word audacity, meaning bravery, so it's something to be celebrated, so yes. Um, we didn't explicitly make that point that the US sounds more sensible, but we did pick up on the comparison. Yeah, we've got statistics. We talked about it being a win-win situation. We mentioned the campaign. Huge amount of waste, yes, we did talk about that, the, the other statistic that was used. Um, we talked about cost. So I think with our answer, you know, we should be in the 9 to 10 mark bracket. Perhaps not 10 because we didn't say all that much about the subtleties of the writer's technique. But uh, I think overall we made a very strong case based on a lot of detailed evidence from the text about how we're being persuaded.